What is this box? What's inside? What the heck is that thing? Stay tuned. I'm going to show you. Some of you have been asking for this video. Hi, my name's Jerry, and I bet that you think you know what I'm going to say next. Well, you're right. I'm a twin troller boat owner, and this is my boat. I got this box in the mail the other day, and I told you in the past I would make a video when this came in. But what is this? Well, I have, in addition to the fish finder that was installed on my twin troller when I purchased it directly from Freedom Electric Marine, I added another fish finder. Well, that fish finder used to be on a kayak that I had before I figured out that that was a dumb idea, and I bought the twin troller. Well, I brought that fish finder over because it also had GPS capability, and I installed it. But when I had it on the kayak, I needed a power source. The kayak doesn't have a battery to drive it like this does, so I installed a small battery and I built a waterproof case to put it in and I have that here. Now what's this? What's that got to do with it? Well inside of here is a new battery and a charger. My battery that I had was only starting to last a couple hours. When I got it new it would last two whole days of running that fish finder all day. So I bought a new one and I'm going to show you where it goes, how I put it in, and what it does. So stay with me. Well what is this? This is a Lorance X4 Pro and this is what came on this twin troller when I got it. And one of the real advantages of this, if you can see it, this tells the voltage. Now why do I want to know the voltage? As you can see, this is showing 13.0 volts. And this is based on a fully charged battery when you start out. And it takes a while to get down uh, to 12 to 11. And usually by then I'm done fishing after a whole day. But it can get lower than that. And this gives you some indication. This fish finder is, even has a warning system that you can set the voltage level and it will start to chirp when you get down that low, indicating you need to start thinking about getting home. Now this is the fish finder that I brought over from my kayak. <clears throat> it's a small screen. I've been considering getting something larger and maybe I will someday. But how did I mount this? Well, in the kayak, I didn't need it to be very high up. But in the twin troller, I sit higher. So I'm getting older, I can't see as well. I wanted to be able to see this small screen a little bit better. On the kayak, I had one ram mount here. And then I wanted it a little taller. I just decided uh, I would just add an extension to it. So I have another ram mount attached to this one and the two of them together get me up to this kind of height. It also has the advantage of this will flex all kinds of different ways wherever I want it and sometimes I think that's great. Well, I did not want to run this and use the main battery since I already have a battery system for this. That way it's independent, it uses less of the main battery, lets me fish longer, but that hasn't been an issue, but that was my concern in the beginning because I didn't know how this was gonna work. So how do I run this? Well, see this? This is a waterproof case that I built. It's a Plano 3440 case. It has got seals all the way around. When you close it, it's got a rubber seal, makes it waterproof. To go through the side, I then siliconed it on each side and made it waterproof. Well, I then needed to have a waterproof connector. Well, I got these on 
eBay. I don't remember who I got them from or how much they cost. I think I bought multiples of them, but I don't even know where they are right now. But the, these fit together. They have an interlock and in the dark, I put a, so I could see, I put little witness marks on them. So I could at least in the dark, if I get there before light, put these together and then screw this together and it becomes waterproof which works great so when i get done fishing i want to charge the battery that's in here i don't need to take it out of the case i take this just like this over to the wall plug it in and charge it so what did i buy i bought a replacement battery it came with well it came wrapped in a little plastic i already took it out but it came in this box with a charger and the battery. This battery is a 18,000 milliamp battery. It's a DC1298E model. I don't know if that makes any difference. It's a super polymer lithium ion battery. I got this on Amazon. I think it was $19.80 or something like that. Well, how does this work? It's got an on-off switch on the side, and these connect to the fish finder or the charger. Now, the original one I had was a 9,800. This is 18,000. Well, why to get a larger battery? I didn't necessarily need it. Like I said, when it, the other one was new, it lasted me easily two full days. But lately, it asked, lasts me maybe five, six hours. And if I'm fishing it all day, yeah, I would run out. So I started looking them up. I don't remember what I paid for the other one, probably ballpark or out that. However, I found this battery, which is literally almost twice the capacity and the price was great. So I said, what the heck, I'm gonna buy this one. Now compare the old battery to this one it looked exactly like this same kind of setup and it was about that much shorter uh it's the same width same thickness um actually i think it might even be just a hair thicker but you get the idea almost the same size so what's it got to do it's got to fit in this case well what's in the case to begin with well the fish finder needs this contraption whatever that is there's some connectors that it had uh, that I put on here so that I could disconnect it if I wanted to. I probably didn't need those. I could have wired it direct, uh, but I didn't. And then I put a fuse on here and see it's a three amp fuse. That's what the manual for this fish finder calls for. I carry spare fuses in my emergency bag in here. And this is how you put the power from the battery to here. It plugs in like that very simple and this plug is solely for the purpose of plugging in the charger it just goes in there now when you plug in the charger the battery has to be in the on position to allow the juice from the charger to get to the battery otherwise it blocks it so there's an on off switch on the side so you can turn it off when you're not using it just so that you don't have the draw. But if you're plugging it in to charge it, if you ever do this and it won't work, make sure this is in the on position. The zero is off, the slash is on, okay? So I have to fit all of this into this box or I gotta get a new box. Well, I don't wanna get a new box. So I played with this for quite some time to get everything to fit in here. And let me get it back in. I'll turn the camera back on and show you. There's no sense in you watching me fiddle with this. Okay, I got the battery in here. I have to fidget with it a little. And after I close this case and leave it closed for a little while, all these wires will develop a memory and they'll stay in place. This is where the charger connection is going to go. Uh, my fuse is down there, tucked down upside down. This goes here. And then these two things, 
They can't get any flatter than that. But if you look, there's a slot here. And when I close this, those go right into the slot. So this will come all the way closed. And it fits. Now, let's say I've charged this and I'm not going fishing for a couple of days. I come here, I open it up, or I leave it open. I pull this up, I flip it into the on position, tuck this back in, close this up, and this battery is ready to go. Now, when I was on the kayak, I had this located so that if the kayak flipped over, which kayaks do, uh, if you lean too far or something like that, I can go around something, hook this on the other side. I just drilled a little hole in there, and now I'm secured. Now, I could do that here. I'm not worried about the uh, twin troller flipping over, but I could attach it to something if I wanted. I'm not going to do that. So... Take the two connectors, line up my little witness marks, push it together, slide this on, and I'm ready to go. Tuck my wires. Now, if I really want to do something, see this here? This is about 50 pound test, best I can remember. Uh, I bought these little clips on eBay. Uh, wrap it around the base of this and I attach my GoPro to here. I, I have a clamp thing that clamps on this and that and then I attach with a I have a string tied around the clamp attach this to it so in case I knock the GoPro off it's not going to sink and go out of you know I can always do another idea like this and clip it onto here if I if I wanted to but I just don't so here we are we hopefully have power on and we're going to turn this on for the first time here we go it's booting up i know that all worked i got power to here i'm not using the battery that's inside the twin troller i have to clear this it's still trying to find the uh satellites on this and um in the garage a little bit here so you may not see this at all but it operates and it's operating well and that will last for days so when i'm fishing loosen this up turn it around put it wherever i want it in or out just tighten these up and off i go now i can see it from my seated position well, what else do you have to do to install one of these if you decided to do something similar? Well, there's a power cable and a transducer cable. So there's two wires here. All fish finders work the same way. My transducer wire runs here and I ran it down this side. And I have little clamps that just like they were factory installed, those kind of clamps. And I just ran it down the side. All the way here then once i i don't run it on the bottom because i want the water or debris to flow out of here so i ran over the top attached it here and now it's loose from this point forward now here's the factory transducer and you can see the same kind of clips that it used now underneath the battery here the battery does not touch the floor so there's actually a space underneath here the battery tray sits on a raised platform here. So I tuck the wires through here, go in, into this uh, enclosed area. And then I come out the other side, same idea. Now, transducer wires are usually long. So I've got more wire than I need. I have a coiled up inside there with a wire tie just holding it uh, together so it's not all over the place. And then it goes to this transducer mount you saw in my last video. There's the transducer. So I just run around this and if you didn't see the, uh, the last video, 
uh, you can go there and look at it. And then I mounted the transducer on here. I can, there's no screwing into the, into the transom. I did this temporarily in the beginning just to see how I liked it and I've never replaced it. Now see the uh, factory transducer is mounted right in. I just didn't feel like screwing into the hull. So I left it like this. If you decided that you would like to install an additional fish finder, at least here's some ideas. Now, how did I do this? I put the base, if you can see it, and I've got them screwed all the way around to make this really tight. Uh, and then ram mounts coming up. These are one inch ball ram mounts. It's not a big fish finder, so I don't need two inch balls or inch and a half. And then that's my battery. I hope you liked the video. I hope it was informative. If you like it, please subscribe. A magic number for YouTube is a thousand subscribers. We're getting there, but I still need some more. So I'd appreciate it if you watch, then please subscribe. You can also push the button below and that looks like a bell. It will remind you when I've put out a new video. You can leave comments below, questions. Thanks for watching. Bye now.